Hello, I'm Chloe Theobald from Charged Magazine and I'm here today with Abby Roberts from Turner Construction. She is the Sustainability Programme Manager. And Abby, can you tell us a bit more about your role, why you're at ACT and about Turner Construction? Sure. So Turner Construction, we are uh, the largest general contractor in the United States. 46 different offices all in North America and actually abroad as well. Um, I work for our headquarters team and I specifically focus on job site emissions and our goal of net zero on all of our scopes. And in that, we've discussed that you've been doing some work in electrifying, using electrified off-highway vehicles and equipment. Can you tell us a little bit more about that journey? How, where you are now, but where you've come from, and then we can talk a bit about the projects. Yeah, so um, electrification is probably one of our most promising uh, tools to reduce our emissions. Uh, we are looking at other technologies. There's many different things that need to be in our toolbox, but we're seeing the biggest adoption in sort of um, anything where from mini excavators to uh, battery energy storage systems that we're able to deploy on construction sites. And we've done several different pilots across the country um, where we're really getting to test out the different pieces of equipment, give feedback directly to the OEMs, and really fine tune the application um, so that hopefully we can scale. So Abby, can you tell us a bit more about the specifics around the projects that you have trialed and, and how it fits into you know, how the construction industry works from day to day? Yeah. So we work in lots of different sectors and every project is unique and there really isn't a one size fits all. So it's been very important to learn from these pilots. Um, for example, electric equipment handles differently than diesel equipment. Um, diesel has a little bit of a lag where electric is right on, you get your power instantly. So it was interesting, we learned that we had some training in the beginning with the operators, but we really needed extra training to help those operators learn the little nuances of the electric equipment. And once we got them to that comfort level, they loved it, they wanted to use it, and they had a choice, mm -hmm. they wanted to use the electric equipment. The other piece of it is we learned that in certain pieces of equipment, the battery really drains when you have to drive it somewhere. So we were trying to do some snow removal and by the time we got to the area, we had lost all of our battery. So we sort of understood that it's about the right application. And we sometimes needed to bring charging to the equipment. Um, Construction is changing, right? So the way you set up the project on the day one is going to change. It's going to look very different the next year. So having, um, through our rental partners, we were able to figure out different solutions to bring charging to the work areas. And I think that's going to be an integral part in planning for electric moving forward. You have to think about where that infrastructure wants to be, because if you plan for it in the beginning, it's so much more economical than trying to add it in later. And tell us a bit more about kind of some of the benefits that were realized by using uh, this electrified off-road equipment and, and also some of the, the challenges really in scaling, scaling these, kinds of, uh, these kind of work and projects up. Yeah, I like to talk a lot about co-benefits and there's a lot of safety co-benefits around electric equipment. So it's quiet. When you're on a diesel piece of equipment, oftentimes you have to wear headphones, you use radios to talk about the activities, you have to make sure everybody knows about the activities. In electric, it's quiet, so you can actually call to an operator and it creates a safer environment, right? Um, it also doesn't rumble as much. Um, I'm really looking forward to future studies on this, but operator fa fatigue is, is something to, um, that's a real thing that, can slow down production. And I think you have less of that with electric equipment. And I'm really curious to see on how that might impact production over time. What about some of the challenges? Um, we've talked about, you know, you, you've trialed some projects, but uh, there's only in a few states. So what do you see as the challenges of kind of scaling up and how you're gonna work around those? Yeah, I, we're a large company, right? And I do need this everywhere. And it's been an interesting journey piloting some of this equipment, working with OEMs and seeing how much time it takes them to bring it to market. And the scalability, it's just not there yet. 
really I need others in the industry to also be testing this out and asking for electric equipment because when you start to scale it up, then this green premium starts to go down and we can really see some change in our industry. But it can't just be Turner Construction. We need everybody in this together. Absolutely. And you spent a few days here at the ACT Expo here live in, in Las Vegas already. And what are you seeing as kind of the future hopes and potentials in and around this electrified uh, off-highway equipment? It was really exciting because I don't always think about the transportation aspect of it, but it's really exciting to see how the, there has been investment in electric equipment and where it seems to be very slow in the construction world, um, they're making great progress in the transportation world. They're also talking about the infrastructure, which is a critical piece to this. Um, and I think they're paving the way to have um, construction to be able to utilize that infrastructure and alternative fuels and different things like that. Um, I'm really excited about charging and battery energy storage. Um, that is something that we were able to test uh, with our generator. We created a hybrid generator where the generator powers up the battery um, but then turns off and then we're running off of the battery and I've seen that start to scale up right um, but it's understanding that technology understanding there's a premium with that battery but you're saving in diesel, so it's not as much of a premium. And we, we don't always think about that. We don't think about what we're spending on the fuel versus what you spend on electricity. And trying to bring that into the equation so that people can make a more informed decision, because it's not as much as a premium as you may think in some cases. And, and finally, what do you think will make all the difference in terms of encouraging um, the construction industry and many similar industries into adopting alternative fuels and electrification in the equipment they use. What do you think is key to really making that happen at scale? Uh, I think it's awareness and education, right? Uh, we're still challenged within our company of sharing all of these stories and all the pilots and what we've learned from that. As an industry, we need to do that more, right? Because there is range anxiety and there's fear about the, the runtime of your battery. But the more we can talk about the benefits, what to watch out for, like please don't drive too far on this, right? We can plan better and make it more effective on the job site. Thank you so much for joining us today here at Charge Magazine on site at the ACT Expo. Thanks for having me.